Hey there, I the Holo Fire Familia. Welcome to another reaction. This time I'm going to react into The Dragon Prince Season 4, Episode 3, Breathtaking. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. And this time I didn't forget to unmute the audio. <laughs> Breathtaking. Okay, so with it being, this episode being titled Breathtaking, do they mean like breathtaking like, <gasps> in that sense, or is it literally somebody's breath being taken away? Like somebody taking someone's breath. Hmm. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I wanna go with the, like, sweet side, like, the sweet version, which is maybe Rayla's breathtaking to Callum or something like that, but, you know. Yes, continue off with our two goobers. Rayla, what are you doing here? I came back. <laughs> and she's like, wait, I thought you would be, like, happy to see me. Like, like, what is this? You came back? <laughs> or not you came back, but what are you doing here? It's like. You look nice. I think the word you mean is handsome. Thanks. Are you not going to return the compliment, Callum? Okay, I, I I have read through the moon, um, so I know what happened. Oops, I know what happened and why Rayla left and everything. And at least she left that letter, which was in the uh, I think it was in the previous episode for the drawings at the end in the end credits that showed the letter that Rayla had left, and then Callum read it. So at least she didn't leave without saying anything. Um. But, yeah, it, uh, considering that she left off telling him that they would, like, like, they would be okay, like, they were going to do this together, and then she just leaves, I'm going to bet Callum's going to be upset. And you know he is, for him not to, like, immediately say, you look beautiful or anything like that, or you look pretty, at least, to return the compliment. <laughs> Even Bay doesn't look happy. All day, uh, I mean, all week, really. I've been so nervous and kind of nervous frazzled, you know but I freaking love Rilla's accent feel... well the moon shadow elves accent which I'm still pretty sure is Scottish <laughs> that eyebrow raise <laughs> his face he does not look happy he's just like uh-huh I have a long day tomorrow I should go to bed wait what I'm not gonna lie it's kind of funny that he's been kind of like for the rebirthday episode and stuff that he's been like upset and um, kind of not moping, but like the thought of Rayla, he would just be like really sad and everything. But now that she's finally here, he's just, I feel like all he's, he's like probably happy, but at the same time, it's just, he wants to ask her, why'd you leave after we agreed, you know, we'd do this together kind of thing. Don't you think it's worth staying up a little past your bedtime? I'm no. tired. Rayla, he's upset. Fine. What do you want to talk about? I'm so happy to see you again, Callum. He's like, I'm sorry. I have, I have, impor I have this mirror to focus on. <laughs> so why are you back? I guess you must have found his tone. Was he dead after all? I didn't find him. Oh, so you disappeared for two years for no reason at all. <laughs> <laughs> the lemur is like, back off, bub. <laughs> He's just joking. <sighs> I don't think Callum's joking. And who's this? This is Stella. She's a Stella. monkey. A, found a cuddle monkey. That's what they call it. A cuddle monkey. Not even like a, I don't know, a cuddle lemur. Cu cuddle mer? Cuddle, cuddle mer? That could work. You're a cuddle mama. Hmm. You can't, you can't ignore this. You, you gotta talk about this, Rayla. I think that's under an understatement. He wants so badly, like hug her or something, but he's just like upset. Wow, the view is just breathtaking. Is so he doing our hair? <laughs> Watch out. You're breathtaking. Okay, I was expecting it to maybe be like I was hoping it to be from Callum or Callum the Rayla or you know whatever, but the fact it's Terry to Claudia. <laughs> Okay. Unless there's gonna be double meaning here. We're gonna have that and then we're gonna have literal breathtaking. I have a dark magic thingy in my bag that can literally take your breath. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Also, I love how they're laughing over this when it, literally she could. Oh my god, he did do her hair. That's cute. What kind of signal should I give? Oh, Kaka! Man, I just whistled. You know how to whistle, don't you? Her eyes sparkle. 
Are you two gonna kiss? You just put your lips together. Put your lips together, lips together, let me know. I'm not even gonna sing that song. <laughs> Blow. Real slow? <laughs> you know, I was just starting to think with Ka uh, Claudia being the way she is, I was half waiting for her to be do that. <laughs> I'm glad she did. <laughs> They're cute. Like I, I would say now my two favorite shifts literally are Callum Rayla first, and then Terry and Claudia, and then Amaya and Janai. <laughs> I know, like Amaya and Janai, I think are cute, but they're not quite so like playful because you know Amaya doesn't like they they're playful, but I don't know. Like Terry and Claudia are really goofy. Rayla and Callum are like goofy, but also like very just sweet and touchy, like, you know, affectionate and stuff. Amaya and Janaya are much more, like, reserved with their relationship. Like, they, you can see they tease, like, they play, but they're not, like, as much. So. <laughs> Did you two fall asleep on the bench? Oh. I feel like when Bait doesn't, like, know someone that well, like, at least an animal, like, you look at, uh... The way Rayla is staring at Cal. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. I just love, I love the like chemistry between these two. And and but anyway, um, what I was saying was, is with Bait, he did the same thing to Zim when they were at Lujan's uh, place, where he, he like shoved Zim off the bed. But then once he warmed up to Zim, then they like they would sleep together like next to each other. And now it's for uh, Stella. Stella gets booed off because Bait doesn't know her well, but I feel like once Bait gets to know her, like, gets attached to her, then she'll also be accepted into, like, to sleep near him. I risked losing the best thing I ever had. Is it me? Like, I know somebody mentioned that the animation style was changed for this series, and I haven't really noticed it, but where I'm noticing it right now is the mouth movement. The lip syncing, it doesn't feel like it's, like, it doesn't feel like the mouth is moving with the enunciations and stuff. It feels more like a static, like, moving like this, and it's just... It feels kind of off. Maybe it's just me, but that's the one thing I've noticed in terms of the animation difference. Oh, You're so gross. You're so gross. <laughs> but you're my gross. Okay, never mind. This sounds weird. I guess we more like, you're so gross, but I still love you. Okay, now... Please, don't you two pull this thing where you don't have, like, communication or you don't talk about what happened and, like, just openly speak about things. Even though, okay, Rayla wanted to. Callum said he doesn't feel like talking. Callum, I really hope you don't just, like, keep up with, like, keep on with this and you're like, no, I don't want to talk. No, I don't want to talk about, like, he doesn't want to, like, confront it. And it's just like, don't do that, please. Again, enough of that was stole it from hell of a boss. <laughs> Are you guys having an affair? Where's Callum? He's Sleeping. To welcome the dragon queen with the prismatic oh, this is where how they're going to celebrate the dragon queen's uh, visit. What exactly? It's a kablow. Shablow. Oh, like, uh, Kerblam. Well, it's complicated, but simple. It's a kerblam followed by a woo 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 woo. <laughs> There's a history, and we're trying to get past that to build a brighter future. There's. I see where Ezra's coming from. Um. It's like, I don't know. It's like being on the great battlefield between. <sighs> Close, to, like the best example I could give is like let's say it was a, let's say you have World War Two and you have you know, the German side and then you have another side. They fight on the battlefield. A lot of bloodshed. A lot of people died. And then those two countries, like Germany and the other country, agree to a peace treaty and they decide to do it on that land. I mean, I actually, don't, I see, like, if we, I was going to say, like, I see Ezra's point, but I also see her point. Um, but I actually think, yeah, it's, a, it's like, if, if some people are going to get upset over that, then I feel like you're, it's like you're getting upset, like, what? It's not like you're dishonoring them. They fought for, they fought to stop the other side. And then now you're, that those, the two countries are, or the two parties are coming to an agreement and agreeing on peace. So why not? be on the spot where there was war or bloodshed. I don't know. Like, I, I, but I do see her point, like, how people could get 
offended, upset by that. But at that point, it's kind of like move on. It, uh, we need we need to move on from the past kind of thing. Yeah. A lot of anger, King Ezra. Yeah. Trust me. Anger. Just trust me. You could feel her that far away. Oh, it's Red Dragon. Whoa. I swear to God, if this if this keeps doing this, I'm gonna snap it. Everybody run! They're gonna eat us! I kind of wonder, would Zim be riding with one of them? Because I feel like Zim wouldn't be able to fly as fast as Mama or the Red Dragon. <laughs> Mama, big holy! Because that's true. We have only saw. I've only seen her like in the cavern. So it's the first time seeing her in her full that uh, standing up and everything. Are you gonna give everyone static? Of course, freaking, of course, Thorin would be the one to like, have his hair go bzzz. <laughs> You're looking like, uh, oh my god, not, not Zippo. Oh my god, what is his name? It's an old, like, Disney cartoon, I think. Was it Disney or Cartoon Network? Where, like, they, he was, like, an anti-hero or superhero where he had, like, the Z. He was, like, a red spandex outfit with the Z and he had, like, spiked hair. I completely forgot what his name was called. But, uh, Thorin having his hair, having that hairstyle reminds me of that. Hi. Let me hear your beautiful voice again. King Ezrin. Zubeya, Queen of the Dragons. Magnificent voice. I hereby formally welcome you to our <laughs> Zim, of course, you would do that. <laughs> Little table. Awfully Little small table. For a dragon. Really? You know, Claudia is so like. It'll be sad if she becomes fully corrupt and she loses this, like, part of her. But I just love how she's, like, kind of like, half corrupted. And she's wielding this staff that can, like, take life and all this stuff. And she's just, like, using it to bonk this, like, mystical table, whatever it is. You're not a dragon-sized table. You're a dragon-sized button. Are you sure? I don't think so. Claudia. That door, that door doesn't even look big enough for... Mama to even fit through, so I don't think it's meant for dragons. Or it is a button? Huh. What are you gonna do, Soren? So instead we're going to welcome you with the comedy stylings of Crown Guard Soren. Oh my god. Because okay, so because Callum's not there to do his thing, they're gonna <sighs> I'm still scared. I hope Soren does something great. Even if it makes her laugh. From the looks of you flying overhead, you are the one who is sore. <laughs> it's very soaring, but also, um, yeah. How do you tell the dragon's weight, huh? You use dragon scales. Hmm? Dragons do not concern ourselves with our weight. Okay, but, but, but. <laughs> we do not care how much we weigh. That's your. That's that's you humans care about that. Yes, they do. It's very funny. She sounds like she's already done. <laughs> I would stop by your head, Soren. <laughs> Callum, you need to wake up. Just don't trip and like make all of them explode. Dragon Ball? <laughs> Manus, Pua, Imagine it didn't go off and he fell and just like death of Calum. Oh my god, these are all freaking dragon puns that I can't. Oh, that got her. I love how that one got her. That, well, I guess it, because it makes the most sense, whereas, like, literally, dragon scales, she's like, we don't care about our weight. Like, she got technical, whereas, drag on, nothing really could get technical with that. Well, I mean, at least he got her to laugh. Well, that was surprisingly well received. Yeah. Snack. <laughs> Not the big anime. <laughs> All I can think of was uh, a freaking Robin Williams from Robots with the. Big anime eyes. <laughs> I am truly honored that you would. Wait, 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 wait. So sorry. 
Don't crash into the strudel. That's all, I mean, the tart. That's all I ask, freaking Callum. Or don't blow it up. All I could think of is uh, Dragon Ball. Don't explode. Okay, you know what? I. What was with the random guards just like holding each other and then they were like, get all flustered? <laughs> what are they? A couple? Or are they like, they have a thing going on too? Also. Shablau. <laughs> I mean, that's that's more like a. That's not really a shablau, it's a shurplup. I don't know. <laughs> At least she gets to taste it. Well, that was a cutoff. Thanks, file. <laughs> oh, she's using her hand light thing. You gonna clap? Remember, she was like. <laughs> I saw something. Oh? L farmer? Well, I have some cute dangly earrings that would go with you. Yes, yeah, desecrate a sacred place, you know. Doesn't matter. Oh. Who? Oh! I forgot his name, so I'm not gonna say it, but if you say him. So. Oh, they're here. Oh, is this a sacred place that yeah, okay, no. I kinda see it now, but uh point still stands. You know, I had a feeling, I kind of wondered if somebody was going to try and sabotage this, like either poison the tart or ruin like Calum's thing or something was going to happen to try and tarnish this or ruin it. Though I hope this doesn't because it seemed kind of silly to me that putting a hole in the face, like especially from their reaction, you could tell that they all didn't mean it, like they're shocked. But that's actually also a really nice painting. Can I have like, I want that as a wallpaper. Like even a poster or something. That looks really well done. I'm so sorry. I don't think she's gonna get mad. I don't, I don't I'm gonna expect her to over that. Is Terry gonna step in? She's drinking the fang juice? What is fang juice? It's not venom I'm guessing, is it? I don't want to know what the juice is actually. Never mind. Did she get the powers of a thing? A, a soul thing? Oh! The staff. Of course she would enunciate the asses. Oh! Time to chill out. You might want to just. I was gonna say you might want to just leave, not stand there and talk. Oh. I feel like Terry's gonna step in, or I don't think Varen will, because he doesn't really have his powers. Speak for yourself. If you want to... Like they're gonna actually speak up that they did it. Really, <laughs> I always love it when like like in a movie or series like or something, like they'll do that where they go speak up or tell you know who was it, and it's like you really expect them to talk out loud. <laughs> you should speak that or the times that they do talk like they do speak up is when they're so confident that they could just pretty much kill anyone that's there that they don't care if they're out of it or not. My dad was killed when I was nine years old. Okay, so there we go. Age confirmation, so he was nine. You want to hate. You want to hurt someone else. Make them feel the pain and loss that you feel. Yeah, it's like there's a saying that it's harder to, like, it's harder to hold back your anger than it is to be angry like it, it's way harder to restrain yourself than it is to just let it out oh my god i thought that was i thought that was thrown in his face i was like wait how did i get from all the way over there to now here <laughs> i'm so confused how can we stop this cycle meanwhile this is going on violence lost pain violence lost pain More endless violence. like yeah stop. I just want to yell stop. Mm. Yeah. It won't work. I like this vision, like this this imagery, like how they're doing this. Because you, I actually don't think I've seen this before in, a, in anything. Where it's like as somebody's talking about peace and like you have an actual like 
example of that going on and they're showing the image of Ezrin like just talking in the background. Well, I, I like that. Jeez, uh, Claudia. Claudia! It's not that easy or simple. Ow. Okay, she stabbed herself in the leg, though. That's not gonna kill her. Unless, is that thing made from a soul fang? Like an actual fang of a soul fang? Because then uh, I don't know if that does anything. There is a piece I've written that I would like to share. Oh. Share it, share it. Is he gonna sing? A song of love and loss. Hmm, the two L's. <laughs> I like that they make his fingers, I think, match with the actual notes instead of it just being like, you know, playing random things and then the music's playing. Nice detail. I... Is there gonna be a love and loss right here? You pose a greater danger to this world than I can allow. Uh, Terry's gonna get in the way, right? Oh, well, obviously, she's not gonna die. Oh. Who? Viren? Oh, Terry. I knew Terry was going to get but... <laughs> and now he's dead. Great. Uh... <laughs> and how's that going to look that there's a dead elf in the Dragon Queen's home? You're still alive? How are you still Are you going to send a message? Also, where's the wound? Barber's blood. Oh. Breath, breathtaking. Where is it gonna go? Who is it? Is it gonna reach the Dragon Queen? I feel like it's gonna be a message to the Dragon Queen. I can't see it being to anyone else. Rila. I didn't know if you'd want to see me again after the way I He's gonna hug her. I'm so sorry that I... I missed you so much! Compared to Callum, because Callum's hurt and upset. She's like, I'm glad somebody hugged me! My boyfriend didn't! <laughs> Understandably so, but still. Oh, there it is. Ooh. Oh, sure, blow out all the lights of hope. Are we gonna get a Mufasa in the clouds? Stop. Fallen Star has returned. Fallen Star, you, you couldn't just say Viren's back? Why'd you have to be all like Cody and secreted with the Fallen Star is back? Also, wasn't the last episode of Falling Star? Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, because you had, you had Rebirth Day and then I think Falling Star and then another one. So, okay, carry on. It's a carry, it, carry through. I don't, I, you know what they call it. Reference, not reference. I don't know, I'm not gonna spew. <laughs> Also, uh, the fact that they added Hero's statue, or a statue of Hero. Not Soren in a comedy nightclub or something. Claudia. With her new earrings. The... I don't... I, is it cello? I don't think it's a cello. Maybe it is. I don't know. Oh, there's the cocoon. Okay. Oh, and there's... What was his name? I feel bad for not remembering it now that he's dead. <laughs> but what it was his name? There we go. Ibis. That was his name. Ibis. Is there anyone I recognize here, actually? Nicole Oliver. Well, I know one of you mentioned Nicole Oliver. I feel like I don't... I don't recognize her name, though, actually. So... The, honestly, the only one I recognize, like, by name is Jack, and that's because of Sokka. But in that, like, all the rest of the voice actors... I don't, like, Ian James Corlett kind of sounds familiar, but I can't put, I don't, might be someone else, but, that I'm thinking of, but, like, yeah, the one, the only one I know is Jack. <laughs> Everyone else, I don't know. What part was I on? I think it was the end, right? Yeah, it was ending with the, with Ibis' uh, wings, uh, but, yeah, anyway, uh, let me go ahead and get into my thoughts. All right, yeah, so, well, I mean, I, I love how I said it, is the title of the episode breaking? breathtaking gonna be either somebody complimenting someone saying they're breathtaking or is it gonna be 
like somebody's breath literally being taken and i love how i think what was it within the first like two or three minutes they literally terry said that claudia was breathtaking but then they also she said i could take your breath away with this and then it ends with ibis's breath like his last breath which i I guess you could say his breath was taken from by Terry because Terry killed him. Um, though his last breath was his final message, and it's just like, huh. You know, I, I like that it wasn't just, like, it had multiple meanings in this episode. It wasn't just a compliment or, you know, somebody's breath being taken away. It was mul it was all of them, pretty much. Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, Terry, I'm guessing, has never had to kill someone before, just judging from his reaction to killing Ibis. Um, I had a feeling, I, cause Viren also I know was back down or he's still waiting for them. Like he didn't want to climb up anymore. So I really didn't think Viren would show up to save Claudia. Uh, I felt it was going to be Terry, but I thought Terry would like just, I don't know, knock Ibis out or, um, like, I don't know, intervene in the fight. Uh, but the fact that he stabbed Ibis, hmm. But it seems also like... Well, I was gonna say Claudia wasn't trying to kill him, but she also tried stabbing him in the chest with the soul thing. So that's not the case. She definitely was trying to go for the kill, not just inc incapacitate him and then take the staff. Um, so yeah, Claudia has no problems with killing. Or at least she has much less of an issue um, than Terry did. Um, but I also, I, I, I think honestly my favorite part of this whole episode was during Ezra's speech, like, them showing Ibis and Claudia's fight. Um, and, like, it definitely, that that's a very apropos speech to have, I think, for no matter, I mean, for in real life, too, you know? So, uh, vi the si uh, cycle of violence never ends as long as the violence continues. Um, and inflicting pain and loss and suffering on others just continues that cycle as well. Because then they want, some of them will end up wanting to do the same thing. So it's like, it really needs to, it comes down in like both sides just saying, you know, enough is enough. Time to move on. Time to forgive each other. Like you'll still, it, obviously forgiving each other will not get rid of the pain of loved ones or, you know, of loss or anything like that. But it's like, instead of continuing that cycle and continue inflicting it upon future generations, just, let's just make a peaceful one. <laughs> It's a lesson that I, I feel like a lot of, uh, or not a lot of, uh, I feel like that's a lesson that um, definitely, or it's something that would be nice if it happened in uh, the real, real world. <laughs> um, so can I like, can I, can I, can I move here? Like, sure, you got like sorcery and like some dark stuff and everything, but I, I feel like I would, I would, I would not mind living in this universe, especially with like elves and all those stuff and everything it'd be cool and dragons and all you know, those and you know magical toads <laughs> and phoenixes yeah i would not mind living here um but yeah overall for the episode uh plot plot was great uh, i also i'm also curious like characters were great but i'm curious on when callum and Wheeler are gonna have their talk because they're definitely gonna need it um i also love how ezrin went to hug rayla like just he didn't need to hear an explanation from her. It's just, I'm happy to see you. Whereas Callum's just holding on to that, like, you know, I'm upset you left me. But that's where they just need to talk about it. So I hope that's, I hope that's not something that, I hope, it, I hope it's not something that sticks around for several episodes where it's like he refuses to talk and just lets it build up inside him with the, her and anger and stuff. And then she starts getting her and anger because it's like, you know what, just talk to me. Stop this, you know, brooding or whatever you're doing. Kind of thing. I don't want them to do that. Uh, um, it, but so far, like, they see, like, Rayla, like, most of the relationships or all the relationships in this series seem to be, like, healthy in the sense of, like, they do talk, they do communicate, eventually, at least eventually. It's not, like, I don't know, what do they call it? Tropes, where it's, like, mm, I'm not going to talk to you and I'm going to ignore you for however long, you know, for days and days until finally you snap at me and then we break it off because, you know, I'm upset with you for snapping at me and it's just, like, please don't go that route. <laughs> B, I want these relationships to be like healthy and real, <laughs> but um, I mean, not that a relationship can't be unhealthy or like can't have, like you could grow and stuff. So there's nothing against that, but it's just I, I get enough of that kind of relationship from Stolitz and from Hell of a Boss that I don't want to see Rila and Calum go through that. <laughs> Please, thanks. Um, yeah. Anyway, animation. I feel like for the most part, like I said, feels the same to me. 
which is it's still good. Like I still like the animation. Um, the mouth lip, syn lip syncing at some parts felt a little off. Like again, it's like it's not like it's not matching the like the enunciation or like what the what words are saying. So it feels a little stiff. I would say the word is. Um, but other than that, animation's still good. Uh, music. I mean, the music that stood out most to me was the one that Corvus was playing. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, those are my thoughts for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this reaction. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, night. Keep bringing bright. See ya!